fish. And what is going to be your connection from your hook to your fluorocarbon? I use what we call a Springer knot, or some guys call it now a 2x2. Two two. Okay. That's another name for that knot. Uh, I've showed this knot to, I, I can't tell you how many people. Yeah. All I've right. showed this knot to. It's I, what easy. amazes me is how easy it is. It is extremely easy. One thing about knots that I have found, and I think if you think about it, you can understand that, is that if you try to show some, somebody a knot that's complicated, they lose interest right away. Yeah. They're not going to, I can't remember how to tie this, you know, and you right. just lost them. But when you show them a knot that's easy to tie, and they go, oh, I can do that, and then they'll go home and they'll even practice it, and they'll start using that particular knot. Yeah. As I was telling you on the break, I had a guy call me up. Didn't know me, I didn't know him. He just said, I gotta tell you something. I watched that video, I tried the knot. You got a 276 pound bluefin on that knot. He said, that is. He said, anybody that says it doesn't work, he said, you can tell them for me, they're crazy. It works. <laughs> 276. Well, let's, 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 talk. let's do another theater of the mind here on Let's Talk Hook Up on the radio. Tommy P is ready. Are you ready, Tommy? Ready, sir. All right, he has uh, got his video going and we'll be posting this once again on our YouTube channel. Uh, after the show, uh, within the next couple weeks after Tommy finishes editing. So let's go ahead and tie the... Okay, we're going to put this right down here. All right. Okay, we need to go here. Yeah. All right. I need so, to use that. So Pete's going to be the rail. All right, I'm the rail. <laughs> All right, here we because go. Because this is a knot that is uh, aided in being tied from a fixed position, meaning you, you put the hook on a boat cleat or you put it on the on the bait tank or something like that. It's that, just going to help correct. Make, yeah. make it a little easier on yourself. Some boats have rings hanging around tackle stations and stuff like that. Uh, kind of similar to a San Diego knot where you need, kind of needs something to hook it onto. I always like to tie this knot. I start with the hook point down. I like to go down from the top down on the hook and just hook it onto something like this that we're showing you and you'll see it on the video. And with the end of the fluorocarbon, you just go down through the eye of the hook, hold on to it. I'm holding on to it with my right hand, my thumb and forefinger. I'm going to come and I have the main line going over the index finger of my left hand. And I'm going to take the tag line and come under the same left hand index finger that's holding the main line. So I'm going to go down through the eye of the hook, under my index finger, back over my index finger, and down through the eye of the hook again. And this gives me two wraps. On the hook eye. On the hook eye itself. I'm going to come back with the tag line, back under my index finger again, over the top, and in between the lower two loops and the upper two loops. And from the top down. So I'm going to go one, two, and then here is a critical point of this knot. You want to leave your index finger in there while you're pulling the tag line straight back towards you. So you're going to pull it back until you got it tight and pressure. Slide your index finger out. And now you're going to take the main line of your fluorocarbon, keeping pressure on the tag line of your fluorocarbon, and literally slide it down. Do you want to wet the line? You can. You're going to come down nice and slow so you're not creating heat. You're not creating any friction. And that's it. Come on. And pull it nice and tight. That's it, really. That's all there is to it. And you could tie that knot from what test to what test? Oh, I use, I've tied 100, 100, 130, 150 pound. Wow. Yeah. And 80, it, 60, 50, 40. You can use it doesn't as an matter. test line. And it's a double eye, so you've got reassurance that you're not just single through the eye, you got doubles through the eye, and super low profile. Very low profile. I think when you see the video, you'll see just how small it is. And I tied this specifically on a 100 pound just so, because I don't think Pete's seen it or Ricky's seen it, but to show you just how small this knot really is. It's amazingly it's tiny. small. Tiny knot. And that's yeah. the thing that, you know, for big fish fishing, that's always the thought, is that you always want a knot that has two runners or two wraps going through the eye of the hook. That's always been a limiting factor of a lot of knots for big fish and heavy line. That's that's the big weak point on a lot of knots that don't have the two. That's why you always, you know, more previous familiar with double San Diego's and double unis, which have those two wraps, but you tie a double San Diego in 100 pound, 
that knot's three quarters of an inch long. And you look at what John just tied here, and it's a little teeny thing, and it's stealthy, and it's just going to do nothing but get bites. And it's just as strong. It's very strong. I, I've never had one fail. You never had one fail. No, never wow. had one fail. It, can you make? Okay, here's the big question: Is can you uh, can you tie the knot incorrectly that it will fail? You can, and the way you do that is if you tie it when you're going through the second time, you want to make sure that the two lines are parallel and not crossed. Okay, that's key. That is key. Keep now, them parallel. Okay. Second question is: what, I mean, We always say test your knot. When you pull on that knot, if you didn't tie it correctly, is it going to fail? It very well could, depending yeah. on how much pressure you do put on it. Yeah. I, when I tie a 100 and 130 pound and I hook it onto a fixed object on the boat, I literally wrap it around my hand and try to break it on the boat. Because if I can break it on the boat, I don't want to go on the water. No, right. absolutely not. And I wrap it around, I, and I pull on it. I pull on it hard. Yeah. And as long as that thing holds. And the one finishing thing on this knot so is that you want to clip your tagline, just like you do like on a crimp. I like to do this like I do on a crimp. You want to clip your tagline above the hook, leaving about an eighth of an inch. Okay. And I clip it at an angle. And then I take the whole thing and I hide everything behind my fingers so that the only thing exposed is the tagline. And then I take a lighter. Okay, and you have to really be careful to do this, that you have to hide that knot because you don't want to heat that knot. That's correct. All right. So is this step necessary, John? You know, it's... Or is a, it, it just a John Collins special? You know, it's, it's a safety factor in yeah. all it is. What you're going to do is you're going to light the end, the very tip of that Don't that turn tag. your fingers. I, I'm not. I've done this a lot of times. <laughs> My fingers are tough anyway. And you'll just burn it and then tap it against the side of a lighter. And what this does, it makes a little mushroom. Okay. Just like you do when you crimp. Yeah. If you crimp, you almost, I don't know anybody that doesn't light the end of it and then cinch it down and clamp it. And this prevents this knot. This little mushroom that I just made, if you didn't put enough pressure on the knot when you initially tied it and it slides a little bit, that mushroom will not slide through. Yeah. It'll stop. That's a stop. That's a period. stop. Yeah. So now right. you're making the line physically larger than it was before because you melt the end into a mushroom, so now it's physically too large to slide back underneath it those wraps slide. you put It's down. just like when you mushroom on a crimp. If it slides to the opening of the crimp, it's not going to go it's through. It's not going to go through. Yeah, it's yeah. Too it big. won't go through. Exactly. So let me ask you this. Crimping. Crimping basically is one line on a hook or whatever, um, and it's kind of sliding free. How secure is that? Is that crimp? compared to a something that's going through two times? Uh, you know, a crimp is fine. I, yeah. I don't have any problem at all with crimping. Okay. The problem that I have seen with crimping is that people, for some reason, they think they got to use both hands and try to break the handles of the crimp to squeeze that thing down. You don't have to do that. And that's what's happening when you do that is you're squeezing so hard you wind up, you start pinching the line inside the crimp. Yes. And if you've seen guys come back with, without their hook, if you look, you'll see the crimp, and then you'll see like a, it makes a U-turn, and it broke somewhere inside the crimp inside because the they crimp. crimped too hard and they yeah. pinched the line inside the crimp. Yes. It's a handshake. Just yeah. a good, firm handshake is all you need when you crimp. And then pull on it, and if it slips, you didn't do it right. Exactly. That's yeah. why you always want to leave a little tag so when you pull on it, you can see if that tag moved at all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. For